the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. So I know a man, some decades ago, who was invited to give a guest homily, and it was on this very epistle that we heard today. You are God's temple. And he was so convicted by what he uh, meditated on as he prepared for that homily that he gave up cigarettes, cold turkey, that day. Never smoked again. That's been 30 years ago. Uh, so that is the power of understanding the scripture that the church has found worthy for us to hear in this church. You are God's temple. And so we have to take care of our temple, God's temple, who you are, if you recall how St. Paul ended it. And so we have to be careful about what we do with our bodies. And our bodies include not only the things that we feed it with, the things that we drink, but also the things that we allow to enter into our mind and in our ears. And I'm going to pick on a genre because I think it's safe with this crowd. Horror movies. Okay? Now there are suspense movies that build you up with the music and the way the actors are portraying these characters and they build you up and you're always looking for the release at the end. But horror movies as a genre is not just about suspense. It's about how wicked can I make these characters be? How ugly can I make the scenes in this show be so that you'll be, you know, extra frightened, extra scared, extra, you know, I don't know, grossed out. And that's their job. And they have all the music and the film and everything and all the computer magic that they use these days to make you have these experiences. And that stuff stays with you. You know, might not believe it. You might be able to say, yeah, but that's just stuff. I know that's all fake. I know it's all computer generated nonsense. But you can't unsee what comes into your eye. You can't unhear what comes into your ear. And you are God's temple. So you have to protect that temple. And then I might use that same kind of analogy with many things. I mean, generally things on the computer. The clickbait. These, all these things that are designed to entice you, to titillate you, to think, oh, here's something I've never seen before. And you need to be careful about what those things that you click on. You need to be careful where you allow your eyes to rove. Because you are God's temple. It's not just because it's good or bad for you. It's not just because it's a good or bad thing. It's because you are God's temple and you have to keep God's temple pure. Just like we try to keep every temple pure. This is a sacred space. You are a sacred space. And then our culture attacks the body in a completely different way. There are some who say that, you know, it's not too long before we can download our brains to a computer and just do away with these bodies. Of course, you know, as soon as they do that, they'll kill the body because the, the human being isn't just some kind of computer-like implants in a brain. It's a heart. It's a soul. It's living things. Okay? So if you've ever had a physical ailment or some kind of physical exhaustion, you know that the body influences the brain. And yet you can also, by certain kinds of things like prayer, the brain influences the body. You can't divorce them and still have a human being. Human beings, and I know that because why? Jesus Christ himself came and took on the same body that we have. He had muscles like we have. He had bones like we have. Blood coursed through his veins just like blood courses through our veins. Jesus Christ is the model human. And he never downloaded himself to a computer. Nowadays, people say... We don't need to teach our children anything. They can decide when they grow up what they want to be. They've now even extended that to you don't even have to decide if you're a boy or a girl because you can decide later on. You know, of course that's nonsense. Why? Because your body is a temple. God created you male and female. 
He didn't create Z's. Right? He created men, he created women. And how you express your masculinity and how you express your femininity, that's what you get to choose. But you can't change what you are. You, and anyone who, quote, allows their kids to make up their mind later is only giving that child neuroses. How can a child decide, what is this thing between my legs, whichever way it might go? you got to tell him. Just, you know, you wouldn't say, I'm going to let you decide if this is your hand or your foot. You tell him, this is your hand. These are your fingers. This is how you grab things. It's like that with everything about you. This is what it is. And what you do with this hand, what you do with that foot, that's what you decide. Are you going to let this hand be something that honors the temple that God has created? Or you can let this hand be something that dishonors the temple that God has created. That's the thing you have to decide. And then life throws so many curveballs at us that we're like Peter in the story. <laughs> we have our mind fixed on God. We're walking across the water. And then the cares of the world wash up upon us. And we forget about God. We see the waves, we feel the wind, and we say, Help, I'm drowning. And what does the gospel teach us today? That if you're drowning with your mind on God, Jesus Christ Himself will send out His hand and raise you up. And that is the promise of Jesus Christ, who rose from the dead so that you would know that you don't have to drown in the ocean of the sinfulness of this world. Because you are God's temple. Let's keep it that way. Through the prayers of our Holy Father, Jesus Christ our God, have mercy upon us and save us. Amen. Amen.